Hello students, welcome to lecture 17 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be on crystals with complete band gap. So this is basically a continuation of the discussion that we had in the last lecture. So in this lecture, we'll have a look at the wood pile structure in more details, the inverse opal structure and also the stack of two dimensional crystals that also we have seen briefly in the previous lecture. And then we will discuss about localization at a point defect, at linear defect and at surface. So the wood pile structure as I mentioned earlier that um, this is an electron microscope image of that wood pile photonic crystal and this is a beautiful 3D photonic crystal. Okay? And this was the first three dimensional photonic crystal with a complete band gap to be fabricated on micron scale okay? and it was done for light at uh, infrared wavelengths. The structure was proposed independently by uh, K. M. Ho group in 1994 and uh, Sojuer and Dowling group in 1994 as well okay? and was uh, dubbed as uh, wood pile structure by later authors okay by this so why the name is wood pile because it is basically a stack of dielectric logs which are typically uh, rectangular okay with alternating uh, orthogonal orientation so you can see how they are stacked so what are the main advantage advantages of this particular structure so, wood pile structure can be fabricated as a sequence of layers deposited and patterned by lithographic technique which are developed for a semiconductor uh, electronics industry. So, you can actually take help of uh, the semiconductor foundries to fabricate your structures. Okay? And uh, using just such a process, um, the wood pile structure was fabricated out of silicon which, is, which has got uh, permittivity around 12 okay silicon logs okay that was done by lean and all in 1998 and they could measure a band gap at wavelength around 12 micrometer okay so subsequently lean and uh, fleming in 1999 they were able to reduce the size of this wood pile structure they fabricated by a factor of 8 and they could bring it down to near infrared range and they could get uh, band gap at wavelength of 1.6 micrometer right so if you think of simplest structure wood pile structure it could be simply a b a b sequence where a is one log orientation and b is the log in orthogonal uh, orientation okay and uh, the problem is that if you do that only okay so you have one log okay and then at the uh, b below that log you have another orthogonal log and so on they were not able to see any significant uh, band gap but then if you try to make it a four layer something like you know a b c d a b c d okay so where you know this layer is basically a shifted version of the top layer okay so it is like a b c and d okay so a and c are basically a shifted version by half the horizontal spacing okay and uh, this also like that this this uh, B is basically shifted from D okay, by again half the horizontal spacing and this structure could give you a significant uh, band gap which is shown here. Okay? So if you consider in simulation that you are considering dielectric contrast of 13 is to 1 and then you run your simulation you can see that this particular structure can give you a complete photonic band gap. And it exhibits around 19.5 percent complete photonic band gap between the second and the third bands. So, this structure has the periodicity of FCC lattice. So, if you think of uh, each FCC atom, can is here replaced by a pair of uh, orthogonal logs, okay, in x plus x cap plus y cap, that is basically 110 direction, and also 
uh, along x cap minus y cap which is uh, 1 1 but 0 direction right so you can actually take this and think of um, these atoms be being replaced by those logs okay it's a pair of orthogonal logs so one is like lying along x another could be lying along y so what do you see here the irreducible brilliant zone is basically um, larger than that of the FCC lattice um, because of the reduced symmetry and only a portion uh, is shown here including the edge of the complete photonic band gap okay so if you look into the wood pile structure something like the evlonovite okay it is basically a distorted form of the diamond lattice which has got a slightly reduced symmetry however this reduction in symmetry has not hampered much on the complete photonic band gap because you are still able to get the complete photonic band gap now if you imagine taking the diamond which is this particular figure and uh, you know flattening out uh, so this is basically x and y so this is x axis this y axis so if you take this diamond structure and try to flatten out all the bands so that they will lie parallel to the x y plane you basically get this wood pile stacking okay so it is a fcc structure with reduced symmetry and that is why you will see slightly uh, reduced uh, complete band gap okay or the band gap is narrower in this case now let us move on to another interesting structure that could provide three-dimensional complete photonic band gap and it is inverse opal so opal is basically like a 3d stone it's a gem stone spherical one okay so you can think of inverse opal means you are basically making a spherical hole okay so you can consider first an FCC lattice of dielectric spheres that you have seen before that they are all fused together but that could not give you a complete band gap rather it didn't give you a proper band gap right which can be for all the directions of k so it was obviously interesting okay um, that you know the optical properties which are responsible for the beautiful appearance of natural opal it means natural opals have this effect naturally coming okay so you actually have those band gaps in natural opal but however if you try to replicate that uh, in your simulations you are not able to reproduce any uh, band gap so you can try the inverse structure and that is what has happened so when you tried the inverse structure um, like you actually have fcc air holes made in high dielectric you can get a you know complete photonic band gap so this is an electron microscope image which was uh, done by sanders group they found that you know um, that the opal mineraloids they are formed of uh, close packed arrangements of this kind of submicron diameter silica spheres in a silica water matrix and uh, they have relatively low dielectric contrast okay so based on that this kind of inverse opal structure was designed so inverse opal as you can see here these are basically you know holes or you can say air spheres repeated in a dielectric substrate so just as for the case of this FCC lattice of closed packed dielectric spheres, small gaps appear at uh, particular points in the band diagram as you can see here. In this particular figure, we are actually showing the photonic band gap of inverse uh, opal structure. So this inset shows the you know, electron microscope imaging. Of course, the <laughs> coloring is artificial. Okay, you do not see any color in uh, SEM images okay and uh, this FCC lattice so these are the points of uh, high symmetry in the irreducible brilliant zone so this uh, air spheres are closely packed in a dielectric substrate with permittivity of epsilon equals 13 and you can obtain this narrow band gap though it is a complete 
photonic pan cap right so the k vectors of uh, the spatial gaps okay correspond to particular directions at which so you can think of you know here there is slightly larger band gap here there is bit narrower one okay so this is the overall one but then for some directions you have uh, you know slightly larger partial gaps which correspond to particular directions okay at which a particular wavelength or a color will get reflected and the narrowness and function directionality of these gaps are the source of those bright beautiful colors that make these opal gems very attractive right so here when you discuss about the inverse opal structure you can see that there is a complete photonic band cap between the eighth and the ninth band okay so the wave vector here varies across the irreducible brilliant zone as leveled between the different high symmetry points starting from x u l gamma x w k okay we have seen this couple of times so i will not be repeating it so these are basically the points on your fcc brilliant zone okay and uh, this structure is particularly considered to be an fcc lattice of air sphere um, that are just touching one another so you have considered r to be a over square root of 8 okay and the dielectric medium is considered to have permittivity of 13 okay so the gap in this case is not between the second and the third band okay as it was for the other uh, diamond based structure which we discussed previously here you could get only the band between 8 and 9 band okay and uh, this is a bit narrow because you can see it's only 6% um, gap mid gap frequency ratio okay so this is just another uh, structure that gives you you know 3d photonic band gap but this is not very useful one because of its narrow uh, band gap but as you can see because it goes for higher frequencies okay so you can actually think of uh, using this if you want something to be reflected from it at higher frequencies the next one is a stack of two dimensional crystals okay so you can think of a two dimensional crystal which gives us beautiful pan gap and start making a you know stack of that something like the wood pile okay so here is the three dimensional photonic crystal which is formed by a stack of layers with the two dimensional cross sections so you can actually see what is this this is a triangular lattice of dielectric rods in air okay as you can see here okay and uh, these are this is how the holes are also you know forming a triangular lattice right so this is a kind of stack okay so what you have done here so it has uh, somewhat larger gap than the wood pile and it repeats every three layers so you have the gap here then slightly shifted one and then again another one okay so it repeats like a b c a b c something like that okay other than four so in case of wood pile if you remember it is basically a b c d and then that was basically repeated here you are repeating it as a b c a b c okay so it is particularly simple to visualize and uh, understand the structure so the reason is it is basically a stack of uh, finite thickness two dimensional uh, rod and hole crystals that we mastered in 2d photonic crystals right so these layers will be also paired in uh, bilayers with an abc abc kind of stacking and they will form uh, if fcc lattice of overlapping air cylinders in dielectric something like this okay oriented along the 111 direction so the structure shown here along with the horizontal uh, cross sections okay it will give us uh, it basically falls into two categories one is the rod uh, layer which, which is giving you 
triangular lattice of high dielectric rods in air and then also you have this whole uh, layers which is basically triangular lattice of cylindrical air holes in high permittivity dielectric. So, when you calculate the photonic band structure considering a dielectric contrast of 12 is to 1 for this uh, particular structure. So, 12 is to 1 it is simple that you are taking air and silicon. Okay. So, that gives you a 21 percent complete photonic band gap which is which is pretty good as compared to um, Utpile and um, the inverse opal structure that we have just seen. Again if you look into the structure carefully this is another you know distorted diamond lattice that can closely relate to the Evlonovite and that is why you can also see the gap is here between the second and the third band. Okay? And to see that it is diamond like you can think of the spots between the three holes in a whole layer as atoms with four bonds formed by the three in plane veins of the neighboring spots and the one rod either under or over that particular spot. So, you can carefully look into how this structure is made and you can actually think of how you can imagine this like a diamond like structure. Okay. So, this also can show you that if you consider the structure to be fabricated by depositing a sequence of dielectric layers with thickness of d equals a by root 3, where a is basically the FCC lattice constant okay, into each of uh, which is drilled into each of which it is a drilled hole is there okay, with an offset. So, you can think of like this you can see air cylinders okay, then, then the you have this uh, rod sub layer, you have the next one, next hole being drilled and so on. Okay. So, a rod hole sub layer cross sections are formed as you can see here where adjacent holes do or in some case do not overlap. Okay. So, in rod layer they do overlap, but in hole layer they do not overlap. Okay. Here you can see the horizontal cross section of uh, a whole sub layer which shows basically a triangular uh, lattice of holes and uh, offset of holes in the subsequent layers. Okay. So, you can see that they are having some offset and uh, the horizontal lattice con constant is considered to be a by root 2 and the bottom one actually shows you the top view of the silicon structure which is fabricated with a gap of 1.3 micron with uh, three layers of holes visible through you know artificial coloring. So, you can see that the three holes are basically offset. Okay? So, this is the vertical cross section of layered structure okay, that, that shows not this, this one, okay, this is the top view. So, this is basically the vertical cross section of the layered structure that shows you the air cylinders in FCC lattice which form this ABC kind of stack along 111 direction. Right? So, the rods have a strange looking shape because they are formed from the remnants, remnants uh, which are basically left over from uh, six overlapping cylindrical uh, holes obviously. And then the entire structure you can think of an FCC lattice of overlapping air cylinders which have got height say h equals 0.93 a and the radius is optimized to be 0.293 a and you consider the dielectric medium to be silicon that is epsilon equals 12. So, with this kind of ABC ABC kind of stacking of the cylinders as you can see in the figure the stacking direction is basically the body diagonal which is 111 direction 111 for the FCC lattice. 
So in this way, what you can do, you can actually see that a rod and a hole bilayer is formed from each layer of the cylindrical holes. Okay. So with that, we understood how this, uh, you know, three-dimensional photonic crystals are fabricated. And as you can understand that it is not very easy to make this kind of structures with, with you know, uh, homogeneous or, you know, uh, with all the dimensions perfectly matched in all the sides. So this is a bit of challenging task to get 3D photonic band gap. But why people still try to make that because that is very close to the natural crystals okay? and um, you can take help of the localization at point defect, line defect and surface defect on this photonic crystals which can be used for many different applications. So now let us focus on localization at a point defect. So when you talk about localization at a point defect, we are basically talking of defects in photonic crystals okay which can localize light modes so we have seen that in one dimension this means we can confine light to a single plane when you consider you know two dimension when you say we could localize light it is basically localizing along a single line okay which can also be considered as a single point in xy plane and when we see you know in three dimension, when we part of a single lattice point, we can actually localize light to a single point in the crystal. So in this case, light will be trapped in all three dimensions. So the point defect basically pulls a straight from the continuum above or below the band gap into the gap itself. Okay, resulting into a localized mode, and that is what is the effect of point defect. So two simple ways to perturb a single uh, lattice site in a three dimensional photonic crystal is to add an extra dielectric material that does not belong okay, or you can simply remove some of the dielectric material that should be there. Okay, That is how you introduce a defect. So it you can actually create a air defect by removing this particular you know dielectric material or you can add this extra dielectric and create a dielectric defect. So these are the two ways you can basically you know create the defect in this particular uh, three dimensional photonic crystal. So these are basically showing you the vertical cross section of the layered structured uh, from this stack of two dimensional crystals right. So consider the first case so this is basically a dielectric uh, Okay, this is basically the dielectric defect and this is the air defect as you can see. So a single rod in a rod layer can be removed okay, like this to create an air defect and an, a radius of the rod can be rather increased okay, that can help you create a dielectric defect which is shown here. So the defect is like a cavity which has got you know reflecting walls in all dimension direction around it. So if light with a frequency within the band gap somehow you know winds up near the defect, it cannot leave that cavity, right? Because the crystal where that mode has to escape, that crystal does not support that particular mode because that mode falls within the band gap of that crystal, right? Therefore, if the defect allows a mode to be excited with the frequency within the band gap, it gets trapped in that particular cavity, that mode gets trapped in that cavity forever. The defects could create localized modes within this photonic band gap. So here you can see the air defect introduces a single non-degenerate state into the photonic band gap which crosses from the dielectric to air band with you know defect frequency as the defect frequency is raised. So here are the horizontal and vertical cross section okay so you can actually see the intersecting you know um, green lines okay so this is where exactly you can locate the air defect 
that is basically the missing rod okay so this is the ez profile okay this for comparison we have kept it for the 2d photonic crystal so here it happens in this plane but here it is it happens in three dimensions so this is the vertical cross section and here you can see it is basically trapped in a cavity where it is surrounded by in three dimension okay so the dielectric materials are shown in yellow that you can see here so what you see here you are actually seeing a non-degenerate monopole state trapped by completely removing this particular rod but when you see here this is basically a dielectric defect introduced by increasing the radius of a particular rod and that gives you okay so here what they have done they have created the defect by replacing a rod with an enlarged uh, dielectric cylinder of radius 0.35a okay so a bigger one is put here okay so this actually gives you a doubly degenerate uh, dipole state right and where the degenerate partner is basically um, 90 degree rotation right so that way you can see that uh, the two cases basically gives you two different types of uh, de non one one gives you de non degenerate mode monopole mode and the other one gives you a uh, w degenerate bipole or you can say dipole dipole mode right and for comparison you can see this is what happens in the 2d photonic crystal right so here we can see the horizontal and uh, vertical cross section again intersecting at the green lines okay and here we are seeing the magnetic field pattern hz pattern of the point effects in the layered structure so again if you think of uh, air defect that has been introduced as a larger hole okay so if you so this happens in the whole layer right in the whole layer if you increase one particular hole radius that gives you a hole defect so you can compare this with the 2d case yeah this this and this the top view looks very similar but then vertically it is also trapped okay in all three dimensions so compared to the field for the corresponding t state in two dimensional it you have very similar kind of images or field distribution pattern for same whole cross section right so these are you know for the evlonovite crystal so you can see that uh, the different kind of defects here air defect is introduced here dielectric defect is introduced okay and uh, this particular figure shows the frequencies okay for which air defect will show up this is the photonic band gap and this is where the dielectric defects will appear within the photonic band gap so this basically tells you about the frequencies of the localized modes of the Evlonovite crystal okay for different kind of defect sizes clear so this is the defect volume as you can see here and these lines indicate the computed values okay within the photonic band gap right so the strength of the defect is basically expressed in uh, terms of the volume of the dielectric which is added or removed so you can express this in terms of lambda over 2n whole cube where lambda is basically the mid cap uh, vacuum wavelength and n is square root of epsilon so that way you can actually see the effect of you know the size of the defect and where it will end up within the photonic band gap next we look into localization at a linear defect so we have seen the effect of linear defect in 2d photonic crystal which can give you uh, beautiful waveguides for waveguiding lights in a particular direction okay so that the same thing can be done in case of 3d photonic crystal as well but then here you know it will be confined also in the third dimension right 
so here again this is useful for forming waveguide so you can remove a row of rods from a single uh, rod layer of the three dimensional crystal so what will happen so you will actually result in a waveguide state which is like this and which is pretty much similar to what you see in 2d photonic crystal just that this uh, vertical cross section tells you that it is actually confined within that particular layer so it is mostly tm polarized okay ez okay in the mid plane of the rods and it is confined primarily in the air of the defect row like this here however the mode is also confined into vertical dimension and exponentially decaying away from the waveguide and this is the difference in the case of 3d and 2d photonic crystal so here you can see the projected band diagram of the line defect formed by a missing row of rods in the case of a single layer you know 3d photonic crystal so this is what happens in 3d photonic crystal and this is what happens in a 2d photonic crystal okay so this is just for comparison they look very similar okay so the linear defects are basically analogous to metallic waveguides where light will be trapped within perfectly reflecting walls okay so here unlike uh, or you can say uh, just like uh, just like hollow metallic tubes the waveguide mode will depict some interesting feature okay so there is a point at the edge of the band where the slope will go to zero and okay that is where here you can see the slope goes to zero and it basically becomes a slow light waveguide so in which the velocity of the light can be arbitrarily slowed in principle so the red line in the guided band is showing the complete photonic band gap okay and here it is for comparison you can also see the same feature is available for your two dimensional um, photonic crystal also for the same kind of rod cross sections if you remove one rod okay so you can actually get this kind of thing but only thing is that the vertical confinement will be missing and then lastly we'll look into another effect which is uh, localization at the surface so suppose here we terminate the three dimensional photonic crystal in z direction okay so by doing this we'll basically destroy the translational symmetry in that direction and uh, we can no longer classify the states of the crystals with the definite kz however the crystal will still retain its uh, translational symmetry parallel to the surface that means the electromagnetic modes will have definite k parallel right so we must project uh, the full three dimensional band structure onto the surface brillouin zone and this is the band structure of 111 surface of the layered structure okay so this shows full rod termination and here it shows half whole trans you know half the whole is there so it is half whole termination okay so the shading regions okay so here you can see there are two colors being used so one is for tm surface band the other one is for t surface band okay this one is for t this one is for tm okay and uh, this tells you the different colors tell you the e d d and e states so what are these basically the shading regions um, denote specific areas or specific regions in which light is transmitted so where it is transmitted it is basically purple e where it is internally reflected we represent by pink d and where where it is externally reflected we represent by blue that is uh, ed and the lines in the gap that basically tells you about the dd states okay in which the light is localized at the surface 
for the two terminations which are shown here one is for for full uh, rod termination like this and this is for half hole termination right so here the green line the upper one is like the t like band that results when the surface is terminated uh, with half of a whole layer which is shown here and the bottom one shows the blue line which is like tm band where the sur surface is terminated with a full rod layer okay now the bands of for the bands for two possible surface termination so one in which half of a whole layer is left on top of the crystal and in another case you know a full rod layer is left on top of the crystal okay so this is for full rod termination this is for half rod termination you can see here how they look like so the brilliant zone of k will be the same as that of the triangular lattice with the k point corresponding to the nearest neighbors okay and the fields for these two terminations at the k points are shown here okay so you can see the ez plot the red shows you positive and uh, blue tells you the negative one okay so you can see the terminations over here so these are the horizontal and vertical cross section and this is where they are matched okay this particular intersecting blue lines okay uh, at the k point so the both so this is like tm like surface state and this is t like surface state so one is for half rod uh, sorry full rod termination and this is for half hole termination clear so this is what we just discussed so tm like band is seen here for full rod termination and um, t like band or you can see hz over here which shows up for half hole termination so the gamma k band structure of this 111 surface of the layered structure for various termination rod uh, layer termination and whole layer termination are shown here okay so this figures basically zooms in on the gap region using the same classification scheme e okay and uh, here also you can see that the rod layer termination all supports the tm like surface modes um, or you can say tm like surface state which are localized on top of the you know rods something like this okay and the whole layer termination here localized t like um, states in the topmost whole layer okay leaving one by fourth of a whole layer which supports tm like surface bands okay in the adjacent rod so you can see the bottom most blue line that basically corresponds to the tm like surface bands which is coming from the one fourth of the whole layer okay so as the surface termination increases in the vertical direction uh, dielectric material is added and the corresponding bands are pulled down in frequency so you can see from here to here okay so what we understood for a crystal with a band gap and a surface of a given inclination one can always some find some kind of termination that allows uh, localized surface modes so since the crystal has a hole or you can say uh, now since the crystal as a whole has a band gap you can say that the surface brilliant zone must also have a gap and as before if increase the termination continuously until it arrive back at the original transmission uh, termination geometry having added b crystal unit cells introduced per surface unit cell okay if that happens then there must be you know to be new states transferred from air band to dielectric band so let me repeat this so if you increase the termination continuously 
until it arrived back at the original you know termination geometry having added b crystal unit cells okay per surface unit cell okay then there should be like two b new states transferred from air band to the dielectric band as the frequencies of these states decrease from the bottom of the air band to the top of the dielectric band we basically sweep through the gap right so that has to go through the band gap so these are the localized surface states and a similar argument for the existence of uh, surface states also applies to the cases in for multilayer films and uh, two dimensional photonic crystals which we have discussed earlier so with that we'll stop here for this particular lecture so we'll start discussing about applications of 3d photonic crystals in the next lecture if you have got any query or doubt regarding this lecture you can drop an email to this email address mentioning MOOC and photonic crystal on the subject line thank you mm -hmm.